And wellity, wellity, welcome folks. Welcome to another Let's Play, done by yours truly, Grandmaster Scott A. And just what am I playing today? Well, not playing anything at the moment, this is a test menu. But I am going to do a little horror game for you. What particular horror game? Well, let us let the intro show you which one. Once it loads. There we go. Important to note, this is running on an arcade emulator and not on the PC version because although I own the PC version, I cannot get it to properly run on my computer. Actually, no, rephrase that, I cannot get it to run in general on my computer due to compatibility issues. So, I am playing this on an. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not the best at this game and I'm not going for any. Good endings or bad endings or, endings or anything, but I just want to beat the game. Oh, I have to do that with it. I'm definitely not going to be getting any special endings from shooting everybody. But this is your standard light gun game. I'm using a mouse here, but you would be using a light gun in the arcade. And that was Sophie, our fiance. Goodbye, Sophie. We'll be seeing you later, Mr. Batman. So, the story of this game is that on December 18th, 1998, a Dr. Roy Curian went a little nutty in his life experiments, like he was experimenting with life and death. Went a little nutty and, ex and pretty much showered all of his creations all over his mansion. Which I'm sure how which I'm sure you can understand means zombies. So we are playing right now as Mr. Thomas Rogan, who got a call from Sophie, that girl in the beginning, to come to the mansion and come save her. And there's Rogan right there. So the way this game plays is that not only do you have to shoot, but there are people to save. And if you save people, I will open up different paths, and it will also sometimes give you extra lives. Which is what we want. Thank you. And you see, we just saved that person, so that means we go for these doors. Which Mr. Axeman just axed through. And oh, more monkeys. Why scientists would invest in zombie monkeys is beyond me, but still. Now you might have noticed there are white flashes every time I pull the trigger on the screen. There's a reason for that. Because back in the olden arcade days, the way arcade games would work was that the light guns would make the, the screens flash white for a second, which are a black box where the enemies are. And if your cursor or crosshair mixed up with any black boxes, it would indicate a hit. Which is, which is why these things don't work on flat screen TVs anymore. Due to the scanning technology, they can only work on those big two analog ones. Which is 
why I keep an animal on TV for purposes such as this. Time crisis. So we're playing our way through the first chapter here, shooting everybody in sight. The little thing I want to make note to mention is that in the, the actual arcade version, um, you do not start out with five hit points as I am right now. I changed it in the arcade settings so that I would for you know make it easier on both me and on you, so you don't have to watch me constantly dying. So yeah, normally you would start with three. And you get three more for every credit, and now I start off with five, and I get five for every credit. And oh, getting barrels thrown at us. Always shoot the barrels first when you come these guys coming at you. So I'm trying to figure out where to go. And, oh, monkey! Thank you. Oh, it's a shrink screen there, accidentally. Hopefully that won't affect the video in a harsh way. That toy! Oh. Sounds like old Sophie needs our help. Oh, he's Sophie, are you okay? I was so scared. Uh, what is that thing? I don't know. It's got a very bloody sword. And oh, there goes Sophie. This is the first boss, Chariot. As you can see, it says right there, you gotta hit that red spot in his arm. Right? This is a pretty easy boss. Just line up the sights and keep firing. No, 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 no! Oh, come on! Who gets hit by Chariot? I think my mouse and calibration might be out of here. But never the matter. There we go. And... Oops, out of his armor. I need to shoot him anyway. Oh, well, we can't just shoot him anyway. You have to shoot him in the car arms. Otherwise, the bone just falls away. And that is the end of Mr. Chariot. Sophie! You... you must stop Kyrian, or else something terrible will happen. Sophie! And seems Sophie has perished along with everybody else in the mansion. Such a shame, but we saved five people and that means we had one life bonus. Woohoo. I think it's that if you save a certain amount of people, you'll always get one, but if you save all of them, you'll get two bonuses. Damn, how big are the bullets you're firing out of that thing, Rogan? So, level two, revenge. I love this level, and I love the music that goes along with it. Let's go down here. That's another choice of the paths there. I could have gone through the door, or I could have gone through here. I chose to go through here. Oh, oh come on, I I don't think there's any penalties for dying in this game, and there's a little drive through right there. Oh, okay. A little thing of note there that you would probably have to pay attention to. When you have one of those barrels on these, if you shoot their barrel, they will rush towards you. Just little things to take note of there. I say I hate that chainsaw so zombie, you don't me. Zombie cookie. So was, whoa! Yeah, you guys do it. Whoa! It's the cool. It's the cool lady. It's bursting through the wall. Oh, nearly just shot her in the ankle. Thank you! Can we, can we get a one up? And she just poses that team reason. Someone's in the ground. What's that? Weird knife wielding trench coat thing. That does a pair of links. Get through the door and whoa! Jump scare. Oh, chainsaw man. It's a little thing of note. If you shoot the chainsaw man's arms off, he can't chainsaw you. Whoa! Oh, that was a lucky shot. Thank you! Racking up the lives here. Hope we make one make way for the ones that we're gonna lose by shooting people. Yeah, you just heard that right, a zombie just told us to die. You never hear a zombie talk again in any of the series, I don't think, or none of the non-special ones. Got the big red one. Oh. Well, weird green moss men zombies. And we're just 
punt our way through the trucher. I'm sure that's symbolic or something. Very mossy floors around it. Do a clean up. Yeah, well, up, up to the top. Out that and you get another saliva. Thank you. That is always one that used to catch me out. Oh. Speaking of which, I suppose I should probably talk about you know, why I chose to do House of Dead 1. It's because this game has a very important moment in my life. This was summer 2001, and I remember it distinctly because we went on holiday to Cornwall. And I was only three, four, three or four around this time. And where we were is a little holiday park caravan thing. They had an arcade. And this was around the time when arcades still, you know, were arcades, which is all good. They weren't just penny pushers and ticket machines. So I remember distinctly that there were three games that I top of my head. There was Operation Wolf, there was Adventure Island, and there was this. This was a big fancy cabin, it wasn't like a little wing, it was a big, big screen. And I was terrified, I think, because, you know, this wasn't like back then, when, back then, it wasn't like around now with zombies. Or, oh, I died, that had no credit. Where zombies, you know, in pretty much every facet of medium. But this was like, my first real, you know, zombie zombie game. It wasn't just, you know, horror monsters or aliens or stuff like that. It was zombie zombies. And I remember my dad played it because, you know, I was only three, I could barely figure out how the coin slot worked. And I watched him. And it was all so fun. Oh, uh, cut my story because we've got a boss fight. Why do I not believe you? Oh, there goes two survivors. So this is the hanged man. Shoot him in the chest. Isn't that hard? Shoot, shoot him in the chest and shoot the bats that come to the That's me not shooting the bats that come to the water. Oh, down the halfway and all the bats die. So as I was saying in my story, my dad played this, not me. And so... What happened was, he died about, I think it was about halfway through level 3, he died, and I watched him the whole time. Oh, I'm sucking today. And I remember that night, I went to bed, and I remember having a quite vivid nightmare, I always remember this one, that I woke up in the caravan, and I looked out the window, there were all these zombies flying and growing past, just stumbling past and droning. There's me with my sheep covered up with the sheep. And I distinctly remember this guy flying past. I should definitely tell you how good this nightmare was. I remember him flying past, looked into the window, and boom, I wake up in the morning, wetting myself, pretty much. And yeah, that's why I've always remembered this game. So we've been knocked off the cliff here. How on earth we are reloading it with one hand, I do not know. Oh, my sound's gone off one for some reason. Well, because we're so high up, we can't hear. But we just got to finish this guy off. Almost done. Pretty cool design of this guy. It's a design that they would revisit in House of Dead 2, which I may or may not do in the future. And there he goes, dropped to the ground, dead. Get, get ready for more good voice acting. We won't let you have it your way, Curian. Who's we? You're all alone and your fiancé's dead and you don't have your partner because I haven't bothered to get a second person for this. Oh yes, double lives. Now we're up to our full five. Third chapter, Truth. 
So we're just literally bouncing through the window. Oh, ow! Awesome. Get some very funky music here. And some new enemies. These ones. Oops, and chains. Which can also deflect bullets, which is annoying. Lies. Got a very handsome cube for a door, which I like. And now we've got techno monkeys. Yes. This I'm starting to think that Kieran kind of went a little s cyberpunk towards the end of his madness. Security card. So we get the security card, which is very helpfully labelled security card. And we just be on our way through to the door. Like that voice. Oh, a lot of zombies. A lot of zombies, a lot of land. And if I'm right, I like that. Anybody else want to go? 
this one I wonder. Collective curing is funny. What scientific grant did he get to build a giant lava pit in the middle of his mansion? I mean, the mansion I assume he inherited it, but come on, how did he get the money for all of this? Giant spider. It's Hermit. Shoot him in the head. Kinda hard. To explain that one, just shoot him in the head. So the, again, a pretty easy boss fight. Just jump down the tube for the first part of it. You should only really have to aim one part. After a while, as you see, he slinks away. And here's something I never got. How the heck do we survive that drop? That's like a good 20 foot drop, and we just took it on the knees. Anyway, just keep it down and he'll keep crawling towards you. If he gets close, he will be sh start, start shooting waves. As you can see, just there. So just keep shooting in the head. Kind of hard to see anything between the crosshairs and all the flashing and all the sparks, but I assure, I assure you, I'm killing him. Yeah, oh, I'll get by the spider balls. House of the Dead, the final chapter. Yep, only four chapters in this game. The other games would get more, but, you know, first effort, 1906. What can you expect? So, how we know, let's see, how we know what to do here, I have no idea. I just saw a lot of buttons and I don't know. How, how we knew to unlock it, I don't know. But here's our first surprise. Chariot is back! Same as before, just shoot in the little heart. Well, it can't be as hard as it is, it starts on your side. Oh, I suck. Come on, keep getting in. There we go, now I've got a bit of a chip. There you go, in the spot. If you get in the right spot, you can see him him against the wall. Check out those fires. Got a little peep on your bones. And down he goes. Yep. Like a lot of games made in the 90s, when you get to the end, you gotta do a boss rush. Because, look who's back. The same rules apply as before. Alright, this time is a lot easier for us. Well, like I had a stupid did there, you can just shoot the hell out of him in the first chapter. The first few seconds where he just taunts you. Same goes as before, just shoot a load of times. And he should go down for me. Ah, ah, it's just a ah. Oh no. Come on, come on. Just one more good few minutes. Nope, there's a few more. There he goes. Drop down through to the Earth's core, I assume. One hit point left on one credit. Let's hope we can make this work. Now, a little fun fact. With this corridor, this is where the bonuses come into play. If you save every possible um, survivor, you didn't shoot any, didn't let any die like I did, then when you go through this corridor, there will be one filled with bonus lives and bonus one things. Yeah, it's another thing I've actually forgotten to mention until the very end of the game. There are two collectibles you can find. One is a coin, and one is a frog. Shoot the golden coin and you get 100 points. Shoot the golden frog and you get 1,000 points. 
So if you see, so if you break open a box and see one of those, go for it. Last two zombies here on the way to the final corridor, and final boss time. Oh, what's that thing up there? But more importantly, Curian. You devilish son of a gun. There's no way out, Curian. What's with the two pointing things behind? I really respect your consistency, but you will never, ever defeat me! That's what Stay you want to think. To my masterpiece. What, the glowing things behind you? Oh, wait, no, he's talking about this guy. This is the magician. Who are you? Who are you? Time to go a temper. And he just got killed. What happened? Why don't you follow my instructions? That's what happens when you give your ultimate creation free will. But it's time for the final boss, the magician, and his awesome theme music. Yep, like it says there, it's unknown, but here's what you want to hit. See those pulsing fleshy things? Yeah, those were. That's what you're gonna hit. He rolls. Ah! He will fire a load of fireballs at you. But all you gotta do is just dodge things and shoot them in the thighs. On the arm. If you can get him, if you can shoot him enough times, he'll stop like that and then he'll start darting around. All you gotta do is hit him once and he'll delay his attack. I like to aim for the bottom thigh normally, and go for the top. I don't really go for the arm. This part can be pretty easy to know when to aim, before you can get yellow value. There we go. After doing this for a while, he will go back to his dark form, like he's doing right now. Somehow his explosion cleared up the sky. <laughs> nice to know. Everything is over. Was he thinking this? Because it's not moving. have nothing more to lose. Well, your life. However, I must go on. Got a nice little swagger there. Goodbye, Curian. Farewell, Sophie. Yep. Not the happiest ending for Mr. Rogan there. But that is the end of the game. Final thoughts? Wonderful game. Graphics may not have held up so well. Voice acting definitely hasn't held up. And admittedly, bad voice acting is kind of a staple of the series. But I would still hunt it down. You see it in an arcade? P pump in those 20 Ps and... Get a good laugh out of it with you and a, and a mate. So as we get this delightful little piano piece at the end, another tradition of the House of the Dead series, awesome little end themes. We 
we go through the mansion to find our way out to the door. And I have to say that one little thing to add, there are three endings to this game. There's the good ending, the neutral ending, and the bad ending. I have no idea what ending I've got, because it all depends on your score, but we shall see at the end. It has nothing to do with the people that you save. You can kill them all, or you can save them all, and it will have no bearing on the ending. Well, if you kill them all, you can't get your good ending due to point score, but still. Let's go back to our car and see which ending we got. Osmo 1. Who does that reference to anything? No, we just got this neutral ending. May as well tell you what the other endings are. The good ending is that you zoom back into the house and see that, um, what do I call it, Sophie is alive. And the bad ending is that you go back into the house and see she's a zombie. So, I am GMS. There I am, rank 4, because I am awesome. And, well, this has been House of the Dead. I have been Grandmaster Scott A. This has been House of the Dead. And I thank you. So, very, very much for watching.